طيب بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم after praising and glorifying Allah and sending salutations and prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah صلى الله عليه وسلم we, mashallah, today being our third session in our book club, going to in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu by Tariq Ramadan. And today, alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have chapter four being presented by our brother Michael, inshallah ta'ala. So Michael, falya tafaddal mashkura, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, inshallah ta'ala, and I'm sure we're going to find lots of benefits. Barakallah fiqh in the beginning. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, my beloved brothers and sisters. Can everybody hear me? Yes, Luke. Okay. Tonight we are starting on chapter four. Last week we were left off on chapter three, where our beloved brother Rashid um, left, a, left us off with um, the prophet as he was walking towards the cave of Hida. Um, it's, it says that he was, uh, he heard a voice the voice of Angel Gabriel saying to him, Assalamu alaikum, Rasulullah. And um, moving forward, chapter four, revelation and knowledge. It's, it says here that um, now he's alone in the cave. So he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's alone in the cave and he's still searching for truth and he's searching for meaning. And, um, and as he's doing that, um, all of a sudden, Angel Gabriel appears to him. Um, so he appears to him and he um, he squeezes him tightly. You know, he says, um, read. And our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I am not of those who read. So um, Angel Gabriel again, um, you know, he squeezes him again to the point where he can, you know, he can hardly breathe, you know. And he says, read. And for the second time, of course, you know, our prophet whom we all know cannot read nor write through his own faculties says again, um, I am not of those who read. Um, so the angel, he held them so tightly the third time to the point where he can, he, he almost choked him, you know, and he says, you know, I am not of those who read. So here, um, the angel Gabriel, he recites to him, he speaks to him you know, read, you know, in the name of your Lord, Rab, your educator. And every time that the angel Gabriel presents himself through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he presents himself as his Lord and educator, okay? Um, he says to him, you know, to read, excuse me, I'm sorry about that, got an ambulance going by. He says, um, read, um, educator, you know, who created humankind out of a clinging clot. These were the first verses re revealed to um, our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, and read that your Lord is ever bountiful, most merciful. Um, who, he who taught by the means of the pen, taught humankind that which they did not know. So here he's telling us that, you know, he is, you know, he's teaching us something here that it was by, by his means, by his grace, by his power, that um, this is how we um, come to know how to read and write. And um, it also, and then it goes to say that, um, you know, those were the first words, the first verses of the Quran revealed to our prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, through angel Gabriel. And then, um, you know, it says here that, you know, after, after those words were revealed to him, um angel the angel just left he left him you know so he leaves him in a state of, of you know now he's scared he's you know he doesn't know you know he's in a troubled state you know he's afraid um he didn't know whether he was experiencing a devilish um you know a devilish vision or if he was just truly possessed you know so he goes and he um he goes home to his wife Khadijah 
Um, and he explains to his wife, what, well, you know, what had happened to him. So he says to her, you know, um, wrap me up. You know, I'm scared. I'm scared. Wrap me up. You know, wrap, you know, cover me, cover me. So she wraps him up in a cloak and um, he explains what had happened to him. And, you know, he says that he's, you know, he's scared. He fears for himself, you know, and she says, you know, she pretty much comforts him, you know, and, um, and just lets him know that he has, you know, he has absolutely nothing to fear that Allah, his Lord will not, you know, humiliate him. You know, he will not allow him to suffer any humiliation, you know, because of, of his, you know, his, his, his um, humbleness, you know, the type of person that he, he is with his people and, you know, and how kind he is to people and, you know, he's generous and, you know, he, he's a person who speaks nothing but the truth. And, um, and he supports every, you know, every just cause, you know. Um, so she pretty much just tries to comfort him and, and try to just try to give him some relief, you know, just reassuring him that, you know, everything is okay, you know. So now moving forward, um, it's not quite clear whether she goes with um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but she goes to a cousin of hers who is Christian the Christian Waraka, Ibanil Nafal, and she goes to him with this, um, with this news, with this information. And Im immediately after hearing what she tells him, you know, he knows just by hearing what she says, you know, he, he can, you know, he knows the signs, you know, this is something that he's been waiting for. So he's not at all um, surprised. He's not at all surprised by what she tells him. You know, she's, she, she knows that, you know, that something was about to come. So, so he says, you know, um, the angel who brings it, you know, the sacred, who, who brought the sacred revelation upon to Musa, Moses as well, is the same who brings it to you, to, um, to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, so she also, you know, he also goes on to say, you know, at a, at, at a later date and a, at a later encounter that they have with each other, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Waraka, you know, he tells him that um, they were near the Kaaba. And he, you know, he, he tells him that, you know, upon this, because, you know, these things are happening to Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he has to be the prophet of his people, that um, he, he is going to be, you know, he's going to be treated in a certain way. You know, people will turn against him. They're going to treat him ill. You know, they're going to treat him ill. They're going to call him a liar. You know, he will be banished, you know, and, and, and attacked. And um, and Waraka being, you know, of his Christian, of his Christian descent, who has a, obviously he has knowledge. He tells him, you know, that if he's still alive at this point when these things go on, if he's still alive, that he will support Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his cause, you know, to bring this his cause to victory. Um, and then he also, you know, he also states to him that um, he he also tells Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know his people will turn away from him you know and the prophet is kind of startled by this you know he's kind of surprised by this you know he he, he tells him you know will they really you know turn against me will they you know he says yes because no no man you know no man has ever brought you know what what you know you know what you brought which is you know the revelation and and you know and and has not and has not been treated as an enemy <coughs> excuse me so, um, you know, and it, show, and, it, and it says that, you know, you know, this is just the beginning of his mission. You know, his mission just, has just begun. So um, it shows that, the, you know, part of, you know, part of his, um, he, you know, he has been allowed to grasp, you know, so, you know, some of the fundamentals, you know, and that it shows that in present history, well, in, in history, that, you um, the, you know, prophecies have also, you know, have, you know, they've all been treated the same way. This is nothing new. You know, they've all been treated the same way. You know, they've all been shunned by their people. They've all been treated ill by their people, you know. So now we go on to faith, knowledge, and humility. You know, and it says that the first verses that were revealed to our prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, who, who he could neither read nor write through his own faculties, you know, he turns, now he turns his, his attention towards knowledge because, you know, if, if you, you know, you must think to yourself, well, you know, if I can't read or write, you know, knowledge and God, you know, these two go in hand in hand, 
you know, so he turns his attention towards knowledge and, um, and Allah, uh, you know, calls on him, you know, says, you know, read, you know, Rab, your educator, Allah being, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being his educator, his Rab, his Lord, you know, he draws a link, you know, he, you know, he makes a connection between the two, you know, between um, having faith in Allah, because in order for you to actually believe that these things can happen to you, you know, you're, you're a person who cannot read nor write, you know, you must have some time, you know, some kind of faith in, in you know, in your Lord. So, you know, he, um, so this is what, you know, it, you know, he draws a link between the faith, you know, faith and, and having um, faith in Allah and, and, and knowledge. So these verses um, confirm, you know, like, you know, the relationship, you know, that he who taught by means of the pen also taught humankind that which they did not know. So between the creator, there's faith that relies on and feeds on the knowledge granted by the most bountiful, you know, so in order for him, you know, so he turns his attention towards the most bountiful, you know, our Lord, the most merciful, you know, because I mean, he's the only one that can make these things possible. You know, if he's the one that taught by means of the pen, then he can actually, you know, he can make me read and I can read and, you know, so there's, you know, there's faith, you know, so you have to have faith. Um, and then it goes on to say that he, um, uh, he who also taught, you know, he who also taught Adam, you know, he also taught Adam all the names of all things, you know, he taught Adam, you know, intellect and reason and, and language, you know, of writing, you know, and that's how we, you know, that's how we're able to acquire the knowledge and acquire the, uh, the ability to do these things. These things were given to Adam. And then, um, you know, so in order for him to have his Khalifas, you know, on earth that, you know, he, uh, he gave him these qualities, the qualities of, you know, being able to read and write so that he can have them on earth and he can, you know, so that they can go ahead and deliver the message. So it goes on to say, you know, about the pen, you know, the um, Al-Kalam, which is um, one of the surahs in the um, Quran, that, you know, it was a source of um, inspiration. It inspired him, you know, to seek this knowledge. Um, and, and it also says, you know, that, you know, his, his um, the messenger's moral singularity, you know, his moral status, the type of person that he was for the first 40 years of his life. And um, this here, the verse here says, known by the pen and by which they write, you Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are not by the grace of your Lord, Rab, educator, possessed. So he's, he's reassuring him. He's letting him know that he is not, he's not possessed. You know, that, um, that, that his is a unfailing reward, you know, because he has, you know, because of his, his sublime morals, you know, the, just he has, his qualities are just unmatched, you know, so you know, that, that he will soon see, and they will soon see that he was not afflicted with madness, that they are the ones who are, who are afflicted with madness. And then it also goes on to say that, I don't know if you guys, um, in some of the surahs and, and in the Quran, you notice that in some of the surahs, it starts off with um, noon or starts off with alif, lam, mim. Um, these are just, you know, these, these, not even the prophet, no one, knows their true meaning only Allah so um these are you know just in order for you to understand this you know it, it, this this it, it expresses the limits of our knowledge you know and for some for, for some to accept this you know accepting it and accepting not to understand what they mean it it, it, it takes faith you know you must have faith in order for you to just to go with it you know only Allah knows its meaning. And I'm sure that, you know, who knows, maybe when we find ourselves in Jannah, that we will all understand the true meaning behind these, um, these letters, Noon and Alif Lam Mim. Um, so it goes on and it says that, um, now we turn our attention to faith, morality, and persecution. Um, Al-Kalam, it continues with 
the Alcalan, the pen, you know, and how it speaks about his, um, you know, our prophet's sublime morals, you know, and his exceptional behavior and his nobleness and, you know, and, and this is, and this goes on since his birth, you know, we know that since his birth, he's always had these qualities, um, you know, he's always had exceptional qualities, you know, people even as a child, people notice certain things about him, you know, certain qualities about him. And um, so it says that knowledge must be based in and rely on the individual's moral dignity. So his nobleness of the prophet, his behavior confirms to him that he is not possessed, you know, that he is in the right and that his reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be endless. Okay, and, and faith in Allah and knowledge in the light of the divine, you know, must have an immediate consequence. Okay, and then it says that, um, you know, moving forward, it says um, those verses that were told to him were predicted by Waraka, you know, because he, um, he, you know, he says how, you know, they were to be insults to the prophet, you know, they were to be insults, you know, there was, a, you know, he was gonna go through adversity, he was gonna have adversity, hatred, and even banishment by his own people. And, um, and certainly, you know, being rejected. So, you know, certainly being rejected at, you know, but after the first revelations, you know, he had to, you know, he still had to face his own doubts because he didn't receive, he wasn't, you know, he didn't receive any, anything from, um, anything from Gabriel, a Angel Gabriel to reassure him about this thoroughly so he was still kind of you know he was still in doubt you know regardless to the fact that he was comforted by you know his wife and by you know what you know he was still he still had some doubts and there were it says that there were times when the prophet was walking and you know he could see the image of gabriel you know filling the horizon and even if he turned away that he would still see him facing him you know so it was, you know, he was still kind of like, you know, scared, you know, it was still kind of scared him because it was like, I guess the second, you know, you know, the, you know, the angel who had come to him in the cave, you know, had appeared to him, you know, sitting between the sky and the earth and, it, and he was frightened. So, you know, he goes back to his home again and he tells his wife, you know, to cover him, cover him, you know, that he was afraid. So as he's saying this, um, some more verses were revealed to him by angel, you know, by angel Gabriel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, oh, you wrapped up in a mantle, arise and deliver your warning and your Lord wrapped, glorify and your garments purify and all ab abomination shun. You know, so in each of these um, revelations, it says here in each of these revelations, Allah presents himself as his, his Lord, his Rab, and as his Rabak, his educator, you know, he is the one who will, of course, you know, guide him and teach him and, you know, and teach him all these things. And, um, and it was not to, you know, there, there was a purpose, there was a reason as to why, you know, he was going through these things, you know, as an orphan, you know, and, and being poor that, you know, it, it wasn't without purpose that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, would, would have these, you know, a period of contemplation, he would be going through these things. And um, so now it moves on to, to, to silence and doubts, which now things get, you know, things kind of get worse for him because, you know, during a period of maybe, let's say six and a half months or two years, revelations had stopped and he didn't receive anything. So he started to doubt himself. He started to think that, you know, he wasn't worthy of receiving revelation, you know, that um, he thought that maybe, you know, he was forsaken or, or, you know, maybe he was being possessed or whatever. So, you know, he, he suffered, you know, he thought he was bewitched. So, so he did suffer, you know, quite a bit because of this. So, you know, it got so bad to a point where, um, you know, his sorrow and his sadness got so bad that he would sometimes walk to the mountain and um, he would attempt to, you know, throw himself off, you know, into the chasm. And every time he would do something like this, he would get, he would hear that voice, you know, he would hear Angel Gabriel <coughs> appear to him, 
and you know, and, and just comfort him and reassure him that, you know, oh Muhammad, you are truly Allah's messenger, you know, God's messenger. You know, so those those were the words that he needed to hear to, you know, to you know, in order to comfort him and to feel, you know, to bring some peace to his soul. So, you know, those signs and, and those um apparitions, you know, those those um sightings from Angel Gabriel, you know, help him, re, you know, like resist feelings of doubt and solitude. So, you know, he was, and then it says that, you know, he was going to, you know, it, it makes comparisons between him and um, Ibrahim, you know, in, in, in his ordeal of silence. And, you know, who, who also, he also doubted himself. You know, he, he doubted his capacities when he doubted his powers. And, um, but Allah was always, you know, sending him signs and, you know, um, you know, sending him signs, just like he did with Prophet Muhammad, sending him, you know, he had his, you know, he had visions as well, you know, just to prevent them, you know, both from doubting themselves or doubting Allah. Um, and then it says that, you know, through this silence, you know, it was, it was kind of like an, an initiation for Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, towards his spiritual quest, you know, so Allah was pretty much initiating him. He was, you know, I guess more of a test to see how much of this he can bear, you know, and, and, and you know, and then um, he was also, you know, like the revelation that he was, he was um, verbally expressing to him. He was, you know, out of humility, but that Allah's silence, he was teaching it to him practically. So now he's also teaching it to him, you know, now the silence to see, you know, how far he can go without, you know, a revelation or without, you know, um, a sighting or a vision. Um, and then, then here it goes again that um, after several weeks, you know, some long weeks of, of it, you know, of his word, Allah finally reveals himself, you know, for, you know, he reveals his presence to him. Um, and um, at last he spoke to him, you know, and, and he, he, he comforts him once again and, and you know, he reveals another, um, some more verses, you know, and it says that um, invoking the rising day and the spreading night as much for their physical reality, which is a sign of the creator's power as for their symbolism, which expresses the fidelity of being and, and the heart between the rising light and the relation. So the, um, the verse that Angel Gabriel has revealed to him is by the morning light, by the night when it is still, your, la your Lord Rab, educator, has not forsaken you. Nor, nor is he displeased and verily in the hereafter will be better for you than the present and soon you will be with your Lord give you, will your Lord give you that which you will be well pleased. You know, so this is exactly what he needed. This is exactly what he was waiting for. You know, this news was great news for him. It, it was uplifting, you know, and he knew, okay, this, this, you know, I'm not, I'm not possessed, I'm not bewitched, you know, I'm not forsaken. Okay, so now, it says that for the next 20 years, you know, revelation will not stop for the next 20 years. So for the next 20 years, he starts to reveal, you know, he starts to receive revelation. Um, then it goes on to say that Khadijah, you know, it, it, it stresses the importance of, of Khadijah and how important she, you know, the role that she played in his life. You know, you know, there were times where there, it was extraordinary and there were times where, you know, it was, you know there were some painful times but um, you know, she never, you know, she never gave up on him. She was very, very, um, you know, and she was committed to him, and you know, she loved him, and she supported him, and she was, in fact, one of the first ones who noticed, you know, his his nobleness, you know, um, as she was um, widely courted, you know, because of her her status, you know, her wealth in Mecca, you know, she was widely courted, and because of the person that he was, as quiet as he was, you know. He did, you know. She she immediately noticed that something special about him, you know, you know his attitude, his you know how how disinterested he was in her. Like he, you know, he, you know the fact that she was wealthy and you know didn't really matter. You know, it didn't mean anything to him. He was just, a, you know, that that wasn't the type of person that he was. So that that caught her attention immediately. <clears throat> and although it was not, it says that although it was not, you know, the usual practice, she. Um, she she tried you know she found the courage you know to to you know to propose marriage to him although like I said it was not the usual you know you know the usual practice um, for a woman to propose to a man 
So um, she, she proposes marriage to a friend of hers called Nufase, Nufase. And, you know, he eventually he accepts, you know, at first he, he, he didn't, you know, he did, you know, he declined at first because, you know, he couldn't, you know, he said that he couldn't afford it, you know, but um, she, she, you know, she, she shows him, she says, you know, you know, I, you know, I'll take care of this and, you know, everything is okay, you know, everything will be okay. So he, you know, he accepts, you know, he accepts the, um, the proposal and, um, you know, their, their union, it says that their union were, you know, was to bring a lot of, um, it brings some happiness, it brought some sorrow and some grief um, because as we know that, you know, they lost, you know, their two sons, um, Kasim and Abdullah in infancy, you know, and only their four daughters were, were to survive. And, um, you know, it, it also says that amongst Arabs, you know, to have daughters was not something, you know, was not like, um, it was, it was considered to be shameful, you know, for you to have daughters, but Khadija and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, they, no matter what, they still express their deep love and, you know, their constant care for their daughters, you know, in private and in public, they did not hesitate to show this, you know, that, that was just it, you know, they loved their daughters and whether, you know, people liked it or not, they were going to show it, they were going to express it, they were not going to hide it from anyone. You know, so, um, and it, you know, and, and we must give, you know, it, it shows that how she was the first one, you know, at, at the age of 40, Muhammad receiving his first revelation, you know, <laughs> um, it, it is her that he turns to, you know, for comfort. And, you know, and, and, and she stands by him, you know, during, you know, through it all, you know, and, um, you know, like, you know, when, when he comes back to her from the cave, you know, troubled, you know, in doubts, you know, she comforts him and, you know, and, and she's the one who wraps him up and, you know, and, and it's just, just shows, you know, the qualities that, you know, the love that she has for him, you know, and, um, and, you know, she also reminds him, you know, she reassures him, you know, of his, you know, the qualities that he has, and, you know, and, and, and tries to restore his confidence, his self-confidence, you know, and, um, it also says that um, you know the you know his first revelations were both extraordinary and a terrible trial, you know who who for a man who know, who who now knew who who longer knew who no longer knew whether he was possessed or, or, or the prey of a devilish you know delirium, you know so here he is he's a, he's a, he's alone and confused you know and he turns to his wife of course, you know who supports him and who comforts him. You know, and, and from that moment on, there are the two, you know, it was, it, it was the two of them that were facing this trial and trying to understand meaning. And, you know, after, of course, after the silence of revelation had ended, you know, Allah answers, you know, answers the call, you know, following the path of spiritual in, initiation. So, you know, after all of this, you know, after everything that he went through, after the silence, you know, pretty much Allah, you know, granted him this, you know, after he, I guess that he he, he um, goes through his initiation, um, and then um, you know, and and it says here that Kadisha, you know, she is seen as a sign, you know, of Allah's presence, you know, at the heart of Muhammad's trial, you know, throughout it all, you know, she is, you know, she was what, you know, she is what, you know, she is what Ismail and Hagar were to um. Um, Ibrahim, you know, in, in, in Ibrahim's trial, you know, both women, you know, both, you know, gave them, you know, they both um, saw the signs and they both, um, com you know, comforted them and, you know, they were both there for them, you know, so it makes comparisons between, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the experiences that he went through and, and also the experiences that um, Abraham went through as well. Um, and it also, you know, it, it, it continues to talk about her qualities, you know, and how she was the first one to, you know, to accept Islam. Um, and that she was, you know, she was there throughout the, you know, his first 10 years of his mission, you know, and she was to remain by his side, you know, as an unfailing companion, she was there to it all, you know, she was just, you know, she was, his, um, she was his everything. She was his rock and he loved her, you know, he loved her dearly. You know, and she was, you know, his wife, you know, his only wife for 25 years, 
um, and who protected him, you know, and who, and, and, you know, and who underwent, you know, she also went underwent, you know, rejection, you know, and persecution and isolation, you know, from the family. And, um, and then it goes on to say that, at, you know, after years of, you know, after years, at, at the years of her death, you know, and he was later to remarry, he, he marries Aisha. And it says that Aisha, um, Aisha, um, the only wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that she, she was jealous of was Khadija. Because of course, you know, she was the first one who received, you know, the good news of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being elected by Allah, you know, as, as his messenger. And, you know, she was, she was a woman, she was independent, you know, she was respected. You know, she was faithful, you know, she was all these things. She was a pious Muslim, you know. <coughs> so in some sense, she had some, you know, some, um, she was a bit jealous, you know, of course, because, of, you know, of, you know, of her qualities, you know, and everything that, you know, but, um, and then it goes on, um, a revelation, truth, and a book. Um, it says that, um, you know that the angel Gabriel, you know, he he um he appeared to him several times. You know, that that sometimes, you know, the prophet, you know, stated that sometimes, you know, that angel Gabriel will appear to him in his angelic form and also in his human being form. And that there were times where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he would receive, he would hear a, a, a bell, a, like a bell-like sound. You know, and that was a revelation that was coming to him. And it would require from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, such extreme concentration. He would have to concentrate to an extent where he would feel, you know, like he was losing breath, like he was asphyxiated. You know, and it was, you know, and that part of the that part of the experience was particularly painful. You know, um, so it, it says that, you know, for the next 20 years, you know. Angel Gabriel was was like his companion. He was you. He was to accompany him, you know, and reveal irregularly, you know, the situation warranted, you know, you know the verses in the surahs that would ultimately, you know, form the Quran. Although it was not revealed to him in in a chron you know chronological order, but you know this is how it was revealed to him by the you know by Angel Gabriel, and that it says that you know every year. You know, around the time of um, Ramadan, you know, the angel would appear to him, and 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 the prophet would recite to the angel Gabriel, you know, the verses that he had received, you know, of the Quran, um, as you know, in the order that you know Angel Gabriel had indicated to him. Um, So, and this is how, you know, and throughout the years, of course, you know, slowly but surely, this is how, you know, the contents and this is how the, the, the you know, the Quran was formed throughout the next 23 years. So at this point here, that is the end of chapter four. Um, I hope I made myself, uh, you know, I hope I didn't miss anything. I hope I made myself clear. I hope um, I didn't bore anybody. Um, I will now pass the mic on down to our beloved brother and Imam Wesley. Mashallah, mashallah, great job, uh, brother Michael. Alhamdulillah, very detailed. Alhamdulillah, um, awesome um, summary and insight uh, with it. Like always, inshallah, ta'ala, we will open up the floor for any questions or you know any comments, inshallah, ta'ala, that uh, anyone here in the group would like to make. Um, one of the things I want to kind of uh, make it come to want to make it shall celebrate right from the beginning is that when we look at the point of silence um or that time when he wasn't receiving revelation you know it was uh, a lot of fostering right within him that need subhanallah to have the desire to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right he, he tasted the revelation and he tasted the right meeting jibril and the likes and then it was taken away from him from a while and for a while in Shalatala, and he had that urge that need inside of him, subhanAllah. And and one can only imagine that when we look at our life today, that to kind of bring a similar to the similarity, to kind of understand the situation, kind of like when you, mashallah, 
are with your spouse, right? Someone who you love, right? Inshallah, inshallah. And there's some separation between you and them for some time, for whatever reason it may be, maybe you're traveling, you're out for work, you, whatever it may be, but there's some separation and then you long to be with one another, right? You, long, you miss each other, inshallah, inshallah. You long to be in their presence. You long to dialogue with them. You long to interact with them, inshallah, inshallah. And Allah was fostering that within Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so that when inshallah ta'ala he would receive that again inshallah ta'ala, alhamdulillah that would give him one, the certainty, and then mashallah that uh, fulfilling that longing that he had so that he maintains in that relationship that he was having with Allah wa ta'ala by means of the revelation that was being brought from Jibreel alayhi salam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place within us that longing and that desire to be with Allah like that, inshallah ta'ala, that we don't read the Quran every day, inshallah ta'ala, that we long to get back to the Quran and to read the Quran, that we don't interact with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that we long to go back to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there's always within us something pushing us to always want to be connected to our faith, inshallah ta'ala, if we get disconnected for some reason or another, inshallah. So I kind of just wanted to, mashallah, highlight that and point that out, as Brother Michael, mashallah, explained so beautifully. Brother Jacob, he says, um, from this part of the seerah, I can see how important a good wife is. Khadija became the Prophet Sallallahu comforter and strength when she wrapped him, truly inspiring and loving. And yes, SubhanAllah, um, having a, 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 a good wife, as well as having a good husband, right? We're not going to take away from the sisters, inshallah. <laughs> look at Muhammad was that other half for Khadija, sallallahu anha, right? This is why she married him. She saw all of those beautiful traits within him, right? Um, but having that wife, really as brother michael he put she was his rock right subhanallah um and, and alhamdulillah he found that comfort and love within her in those very difficult in that very difficult moment when he was tried by you know uh, meeting an angel for the very first time you know can you only imagine you know you're sitting up in, in the mountain in the middle of nowhere you know high up and all of a sudden this thing comes and squeezes you that you've never seen before it's bigger than you it's bigger than life and it tells you to read and subhanallah you know, it tell, gives you some instructions and you follow behind it and then you leave, you know, you can only imagine what was going through his head in that moment, subhanAllah, as would be going through anyone's head at that moment. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, mashallah, the angel came and this is revelation, He, you know, and he was joyful. No, he was nervous. He didn't know what this was, subhanAllah, right? And he returns back and he doesn't find Khadija radiallahu anha, you know, saying, Muhammad, what you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> you, 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 you tripping? <laughs> What's going on with you? <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, what you put in your juice today, right? <laughs> she didn't tell him any of that. She, mashallah, right away, comfort him. Yeah, Muhammad, you're not crazy. You know what I mean? Allah will never leave you, right? Because of, mashallah, you are this and you are that and you are this and you are that. And she begins to comfort him with his traits and characteristics that he possessed. And mashallah, that is beautiful. And, uh, and when we look at that action of Khadija, we see how spouses should interact with one another. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, right, that she is a covering for you and you are a covering for her, subhanAllah, right, because this is what a covering does, it protects one another, right, it protects you, the clothes protect you from the climate, your wife protects you, your husband protects you, subhanAllah, and it's very important, inshallah, and this is why I tell our brothers and sisters who are searching for marriage, right, make sure that, like Khadija, radiallahu anha, you know, it ain't just about the man who looks good, and he's gorgeous, and or the woman, the mashallah, she's beautiful, and she's dropped that gorgeous. It's about those traits of faith, right? Those traits of honesty, those traits of mashallah, being religious, those traits of being merciful and kind, right? Caring, compassionate. This is what Khadija radiallahu anha saw. She didn't say, wow, look at Muhammad. He's he's like the handsome, the most handsome man in Quraysh. I, I, I need to offer, I want to offer for marriage. No, she was like, look, his characteristic. She's mentioning his traits, subhanAllah. Right. Oftentimes, because of the world that we got caught up in, because of the world we live in and, you know, the TV and everything else that we, we seem to fall into. Right. The Bollywoods and all this other stuff is like, you know, we're looking for the person that's subhanAllah going to make our eyes black. Right. SubhanAllah. But then they may just be, you know, maybe hypocritical. They may be people who don't practice. They may be people who are awful. Right. SubhanAllah. They look good on the outside, but inside they're corrupt as, and rotten as the, as the most rotten of fruit. SubhanAllah. Maybe on the outside, subhanAllah, they're not, you know, totally, you know what I mean, mashallah, drop dead, or, you know, beautiful or gorgeous or whatever it may be. But inside, subhanAllah, the beauty that ha is within inside 
radiate so strong outside that they become the most beautiful of people, subhanAllah, right? SubhanAllah. And, and, and this is kind of what we should be kind of keeping focus when we're looking for marriages, marriage, inshallah, and hopefully for those of us who are in long-term marriages, mashallah, I know my brothers here, mashallah, have been married long-term, some of, some of them just like me, alhamdulillah, that we continue to work at our marriages every single day so that we have this relationship that Khadija and Muhammad has. So imagine after she died and passed away, you know, Aisha became jealous, <laughs> right? Even when he would hear the, the steps and the voice of her sister, Hala, he would be like, oh, Hala, oh, Hala, subhanAllah, right? He right away, his mind would go to Khadija. He, he, he would see her friends and he would go and slaughter animals and go take them food, right? And, 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 and you know, Aisha, she used to be like, yeah, you know, Muhammad said, why are you always thinking of that old lady? <laughs> right, subhanAllah. You're always thinking about that old lady. I'm young. I'm like the, the bush that nobody ever grazed, meaning she was a virgin, you know what I mean? Nobody ever grazed past me. And Muhammad says something to her, she believed in me when nobody did. She comforted me when I needed it. And she was the only one to bear all of my children, right? SubhanAllah, right? Showing that, mashallah, Prophet Muhammad says, Salam, he, she, Khadija left that stamp in his heart, SubhanAllah, until he died. Allahu Akbar, right? So alhamdulillah, inshallah, tala, we do that for one another in our marriages as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else, inshallah? Tana? Yes, Papa. No, 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 no. No, put that in Sumeru. No, put that in Sumeru. No, this is mine. Okay, no. <laughs> Go ahead, inshallah. Tana. I'm sorry. Anybody else? I want to share a reflection, inshallah. Tana. Questions? You can type it out. You can open up your mic, inshallah, ta'ala, um, as you like, inshallah. Another thing as well, with uh, well, maybe you guys are getting the courage to jump in. Um, when we were talking about the, the faith, knowledge, and humility, Allah teaching right, Adam, the names of all things, right, Allah giving him reason, intellect, he mentions language, writing skills, right, um, qualities that are required to enable us to be Allah's Khalifa's uh, vicegerents on the earth, right, um, and, and, and subhanAllah, when we, when we think about this, right, sometimes we as human beings don't realize that the knowledge and the capabilities that we have come from the creator of the heavens and earth. It's not because, mashallah, I woke up gifted. It wasn't because I was born gifted. It was because, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, Allah gifted me with these things as I was being raised, alhamdulillah, and living in life, inshallah ta'ala. He said things to my to me or my way, inshallah ta'ala, that I encountered that allowed me to learn and gain, and gain knowledge. But way too often, mankind is arrogant, right? And we think that it's because of me, my, accompli my accomplishments, and what I've done. Right, subhanAllah, rather than being uh, rather than it being something that humbles them, inshaAllah ta'ala. Um, and this is why we say, Rabbi Zidani Ilma. Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge, right? The knowledge is only increased because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not increased because I went to the university and I studied. Yes, that was my effort. But if Allah doesn't bless me with the ability to grasp and to understand, I can go and stand, sit in the university and still come out and be lost, right? SubhanAllah. I know guys. I know a person who studied, you know, years Islam and in the university, he came home back to America. After two years, he left Islam completely, subhanAllah, learned Arabic, memorized the Quran and the whole nine yards and then left Islam. And Allah knows best if there was a lack of sincerity there, some hypocrisy, whatever it may be. But it, it's a reality that we have to realize that, that we have to have shukr and gratefulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the one who gives us these things and our knowledge and our skill set should never make us arrogant but it should make us more grateful that Allah has given us something special inshallah ta'ala that we can compart or give or share with the world inshallah ta'ala. Anyone else want to jump in? Bismillah. Jacob says, I can only imagine listening to the Prophet وسلم, reciting verses, knowing that Angel Jibril is teaching. Ya SubhanAllah, it must have been something amazing, right? Allahu Akbar. It must have been something amazing. And just watching him in that last form of that revelation, he used to get the form of the bell, you know, and that would be the hardest upon him. 
even sometimes they say he would be sitting on top of an animal and the animal would kind of collapse down to his knees because of the pressure and the force of the revelation, subhanAllah. And the companions, when that would happen to him, they could see it on his face, he'd begin to sweat. And they knew that revelation was coming to him. You know, subhanAllah, it had to just be like, it had to be amazing to be there in those moments, inshallah ta'ala. And at the same time, scary, because you don't know if you would have been from those who had believed or those who would have fought against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, or denied him, alayhi salatu wa salam. But definitely, subhanAllah, um, knowing that Jibril came down. And, and you see in, in the famous hadith, the hadith Jibril, where Jibril, he comes down and in the form of a man, and he's sitting amongst the companions. And he goes up to the Prophet, alayhi salam, and he sits to the, with the Prophet, in front of the Prophet, putting his knees to the knees of the Prophet, like this, touching the knees. And then he takes his hands and he puts his hands on the thighs of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he asks Muhammad those questions, what is Islam? And the Prophet sallam, answers and he says, Sadaqt, you've told the truth, ya Muhammad. And the companions, they're looking at each other like, who's this man that he's asking the Prophet questions and then he's affirming that the Prophet sallam, is telling the truth, right? And then he says, and you know, what is, you know, Iman? And he answers, and then what is Ihsan? And he answers, and each time he's saying, Sadaq, you've told the truth, right? And then he says, tell me about the hour, subhanAllah. And then after this, he leaves. And then the Prophet sallam, tells Umar ibn Khattab, who was present, he says, go get that man and bring him back. Omar goes out trying to find them, but he can't find them, subhanAllah. And then when he comes back, Omar, and he says that he can't find him, he basically, the Prophet tells him, do you know who that man was? And they said, no, Ya Rasulullah, Allah wa Rasulahu a'la, Allah and his messenger know best. He says, that was Jibreel, Jibreel who came to teach you your faith, subhanAllah. To know that you were just sitting in a session, in a dars, in a lesson, and Jibreel alayhi salam showed up was sent by Allah to teach you your faith, subhanAllah, is something that was just special um, and given to the companions based on their hearts as well, inshallah ta'ala, and the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and something that we can't imagine what that was like, subhanAllah. Anyone else, as we are approaching the end of our time here? Yeah, it teaches us, you know, it teaches us a lot about uh, companionship, you know, and, and your spouses and, and husbands and, you know, and how they should be, you know, how one should treat each other, you know, with, you know, with that, you know, the way she comforted him and the way she believed in him and, you know, not, not you know, you don't have too many wives or husbands, you know, these days that can actually, you know, you know, uh, uh, give off that same, you know, that, that you know, that same um, um, comfort and, 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 you know, and, and make them feel, you know, re, you know, reassure them. You know, so, you know, what she, you know, what she, you know, the qualities that she had, you know, um, just amazing, you know, and um, also to show, you know, his qualities as well, you know, it was like a match made in heaven, you know, for these two, because, um, you know, she was, you know, she could have easily married anyone, but, you know, because of her wealth and her status, but, um, you know, it shows that because, you know, he was like, you know, you know, was like, who is this guy? Like, you know, he doesn't, you know, who is he? You know, he's not paying me no mind. He's not interested in, you know, so I, I need to find out more about, you know. So that was amazing, you know, just to show, you know, his qualities and stuff like that and how, you know, you know, these things, he wasn't just, you know, he wasn't interested in any of these things, you know, it was more more to it than, you know, what, what she had. And SubhanAllah, you know, and, and it wasn't a marriage full of just happy and joyful moments. It was a marriage yeah. that went through a lot of grief. Those last 10 years for her were, were, were difficult those were the first 10 years of islam that were the most difficult subhanallah and then you know you can you can only imagine that during the last moments of her life you know they were out in the desert being boycotted right nobody would sell to them nobody would give them food nobody would trade with them right they were completely boycotted left them all alone subhanallah if you read some of the other sirahs and we'll probably or we'll, we'll kids would eventually inshallah you're going to see the babies were out there crying subhanallah because of hunger they were dying subhanallah people were dying because of hunger subhanallah you know it was after this that she subhanallah passed away and it's called you know these years are recognized as the years of sorrow for the prophet right and you can only imagine that subhanallah throughout that whole time never once did she say muhammad this is too much for me right i can't handle this this is too much um, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm glad you're a person of faith and you're strong, but I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I, I, I can be living life much easier than this, right? No, mashallah, she stood by his side, right? Having that faith in Allah first and that certainty in Allah first. And then in her husband, 
that inshallah ta'ala together we will get through this inshallah ta'ala there's nothing too difficult that we together as a couple can't get through right and i think that that is something that is missing in today's society with our spouses and, and with married couples inshallah ta'ala that the moment the first difficulty shows up one of the two runs away right subhanallah and difficulty is always going to be present in the marriage inshallah ta'ala but when you can stick it out when you can work it out, when you can talk it out, inshallah ta'ala, when you can figure it out, alhamdulillah, that is showing how, mashallah, the resilience in your marriage, alhamdulillah, <laughs> as you see the resilience in the marriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah, and we ask Allah to give us marriages that are resilient, um, just like the marriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with Khadija ta'ala, Any last uh, comments, inshallah ta'ala? I think what brother, brother Michael read shows us that if the most perfect human being can feel nervous and scared that it's okay for us to feel like that too. <laughs> MashaAllah. You see, the, the baby is already contributing. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. No, for sure, for sure. Totally agree, Jacob. Allahu Akbar. And then Sister Izoria. She says that uh, Sheikh Omar Suleiman has a great lecture on YouTube about the life of uh, the love the Prophet had for Khadija radiallahu anha. And she said it's worth watching, inshallah ta'ala. So she's suggesting, you know, for the brothers and sisters to go and watch that YouTube lecture by Sheikh Omar Suleiman, uh, his, uh, the Khadija, his first love, inshallah ta'ala. So alhamdulillah. So go by, check that out, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Omar Suleiman is amazing. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, Produces some awesome content, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the Shaykh, alhamdulillah, for all that he does for the Ummah of Muhammad as well. I mean, khair, uh, if there's no other comments, inshallah ta'ala, uh, or questions, then inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, it is always a pleasure beyond being on here with you guys, um, journeying with you, inshallah ta'ala, through our faith, alhamdulillah, and specifically today, journeying through the life of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, use this, inshallah ta'ala, uh, as reflective points for your own life, right? See, you know, what you need to better, inshallah ta'ala, what you can, you know, increase in your life, inshallah ta'ala, what we need to remove from our life, inshallah ta'ala. And we know that, alhamdulillah, we're never going to be perfect, but alhamdulillah, we have the perfect example um, in front of us that we're reading about every Thursday, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is our guide, alhamdulillah, and we allow, and if we allow Allah to guide us by way of that light and the Quran as well, then inshallah ta'ala will be walking on a path, alhamdulillah, well lit, alhamdulillah, that will take us right to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Yom al Qiyamah, those who will be under his mercy and will be given his mercy, given his love, and given his entrance into paradise. I mean, don't forget every morning for those of you who um, may not know, we read the Quran together from 7.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock here on the same channel, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll see those brothers and sisters tomorrow uh, who join us. And then remember that starting from tonight, tonight after Maghrib begins Yom al Jumu'ah. For those of you who we may not see tomorrow, don't forget to recite Surah Al Kaf. For Friday, inshallah ta'ala, yawm al or at least listen to it for the barakah and the blessing that is contained in it as taught by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khayra, Michael. And like always, we always allow our guest lecturer to be the one who takes us out with the last words, inshallah. Okay, I would like to say first and foremost, if you do have a good spouse on your side or a good husband on your side, you know, hey, we're blessed because I've been married for 20 years. Well, I've been with my wife for 20 years, married for six. And I can honestly say that it, it, it does exist. You know, you do have some good spouses out there. You have some good husbands out there. And I am truly blessed. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, you know, having her in my life for her support, you know. Um, and well, uh, may Allah bless you all. May Allah continue to guide us. May Allah continue to keep our hearts together. May Allah increase us all in faith. May Allah instill in us the knowledge yes. for us. Um, may Allah protect us from the, you know, the hellfire. May he protect us from the shaitan that was in his whispers. May he protect us from the, from the disbelieving people. And may he grant us 
the ultimate reward of Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my beloved brothers and sisters. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam.